Well, yesterday I went at tomatoes to kind of get caught up with them because they've been pushing. Well, the other day I went ahead and canned up some quarts of whole tomatoes, uh, nine of them, I think. And that caught me up, but then, you know, they're always pushing. Tomatoes are always, I've got a lot of tomatoes. So, yesterday I went at them again, but this time, rather than do it in court, you know, whole tomatoes, uh, the deal when you do that, you end up, you're canning a lot of water. And you have the seeds in there. So what I did, was to make tomato sauce and can that up in pints. Now, one pint of this has as much tomato as a whole quart of the whole tomatoes. And what I was, I think I've got uh, like 20 of these. But when I was at it, then I decided to uh, can up some in half pints too, because there are times well, when I'm making like meatloaf or something that I, I don't need a whole pint of it. I just, you know, a half pint is plenty. So they're good to hand on, have on hand. I think I got eight of those. And that's probably enough of them. But uh, the tomato sauce, you can't go wrong with that. I think I'll, I'll can up some quarts of that. But to make the sauce, I use this contraption here, which was something that was from my grandma, though I, again, later I ran across another one, so I bought it, but I've got a kettle that fits underneath. You dump the tomatoes in here. You know, I take the hides off them first, then dump them in here, and, and you run this around, it, it chews them up, puts just nothing but pulp comes out, the seeds stay in there, which is great, particularly if you're using heirloom tomatoes and you want to be able to save the seeds. So they're a good device, uh, though this is, you know, like I say, it came from my grandma, so it's pretty old. And it is made out of aluminum, and in canning you really want to stay with stainless if you can, but I haven't seen a design like this in stainless. There's, there's other designs in, in stainless that work, but this is also the thing I use to make that grape juice to make the jelly out of. They're handy. Uh, like I said, it'd be better if it was stainless, but at the time that these were made, uh, they really, they thought aluminum was the cool thing. Stainless really wasn't an option. But another thing, you know, a lot of the jars that I use are ones that came, they were originally my grandma, and she passed them on to an aunt, and then they went to my mom, and then they went to me. So I'm dealing with some older jars, but you know, like the real old ones like this, or the old, uh, any of the blue ones that had a zinc top, or I've got a lot of the Armstrong and a lot of the Anchor Hawking ones. Well, I don't use them, at least not in the pressure canner. I'll use them in the, in the boiling bath, you know, and, and that, is what tomatoes are generally done in, you know, so it's not a big deal. But what I was going to talk about was the price of jars. It's kind of funny, you know, like that auction sale I was at. Uh, there was some of these old jars that went for, you know, like this is dated 1908. I mean, they're old and they're really not that useful anymore except for storing like uh, dried peppers and stuff like that. You know, I, I use them, but for storage more. You know, I don't actually can in them. But I see a lot of times at rubber sales and thrift stores, they'll have boxes of jars. Uh, and always mixed in there is like some old mayonnaise jars and whatnot. And they're really not the right thing to use. They will work, but uh, they tend to break. That thin glass, they aren't made for, for canning, really. They're a one-time use sort of thing. It would be nice if companies would, would actually sell their products in 
like ball or curd jars so that they could be reused. That makes more sense to have to recycle glass. But like I say, at truck stores and rumble sales, I see where people want to sell you jars. You know, used jars for like a dollar or two dollars even. You have to keep in mind that the new jars aren't very expensive. You know, like a dozen quarts is like twelve dollars, so it's like a buck a piece. But then they come with the bands and the lids. You know, normally if you're buying a used jar, you're not getting the, the bands. And like I say, twelve bucks. Well, if you have to buy the bands and the lids. For a dozen of them, you're looking at about six bucks. So honestly, if you run across used jars, even if they're in good shape, you don't want to pay more than about 50 cents for them, but it doesn't make any sense. You know, Jews, new jars are a good investment. So, you know, if you need them, don't hesitate to buy them. You know, don't, like I say, try to skimp by with the mayonnaise jars and that sort of thing. Because they're a deal and you know, they'll last like a hundred years, you know. <laughs> it just surprises me when I see people trying to charge so much for them, because they really aren't very expensive. They're really quite a bargain. The, the actually the most expensive thing is the band, you know, because the lids you get a dozen for a couple bucks. But you gotta have the bands. And there again, I do something different, you know. I know a lot of people, and uh, in, a, in the books a lot of times it talks about, you know, after you come out of the canner, you can take that band off. I don't do that. I leave the bands on because sometimes I'm dealing with extremes of temperature. Now that's fine, you don't need it on there once they're sealed. But if they end up in a place that gets fairly warm, like I, I used to have to store them up in a loft in my old cabin because if you got down on the floor they're going to freeze solid so the only place to keep them from freezing was up in the loft well if i had you know i was heating with a barrel stove you get that barrel stove ripping it's going to get really hot up above and you could hear them clink you know that they they would pop out. No, that doesn't mean they unsealed because the band was still on there. Because then later when it cooled down, you hear them clunk, they go back down. But they can change with the temperature. So unless you've got a really stable environment to store your stuff, you really don't want to pull the bands off. Though I, I see people do it all the time. I just know that I have never had anything on seal that way. Whereas I know if I wouldn't have had that band on, it would have popped that lid loose. So it depends on where you're storing them. You know, I'm trying to get away from <laughs> You don't want the stuff to freeze, but it's, for some people, it's hard to keep a really stable temperature. You know, for some people, this is not a big deal, but like for me, like I said, I'd hear them all night. They'd be clunking as they cool down, and then in the morning, I'd get the stove over, and I'd hear them go ping, 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 you know. So, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but like I said, the, the bands themselves are fairly expensive, so you really do want to keep track of them. I've got a, a wire thing, almost like a big safety pin that I put the bands on as I use this stuff and, and always keep the bands. But don't be afraid to buy new jars. Like I said, they are not that expensive. Not like people think, you know, they <laughs> they want to get into Canon and they start looking in thrift stores and stuff thinking they're going to get a bargain. A lot of times it ain't a bargain when when the new ones are not that expensive. You know, they're and they're excellent jars. In fact, I see, you know, at least Kerr has changed. Uh, it says these new lids, it says now up to 18 months. Wow. I tell you, I've, I've had stuff two years old with the old lids and it never bothered me, but they must have changed that uh, like a rubber kind of stuff that's on the lid to something they think is better. But, and I have no preference really between Kerr or Ball. 
I know at one time I used to hear about some kind of lid where you you could actually reuse them. They had like a rubber gasket or something that you would reuse the lid. And I used to see them turn up, but I haven't seen them for a while, so I don't know what become of that theory. But these are commonly available, you know, so I, I buy them all the time. But like I say, it surprised me when people, you know, fight over jars at like auction sales when jars are not that expensive. Uh, so don't be afraid to buy them. Like I say, they'll last a hundred years. Glass is a is a good thing. Some of the older stuff too, uh, especially in these blue ones sometimes. Uh, this one I don't see any, but I know some of them you'll see air bubbles or air pockets in the glass. Well, now if you run them in a pressure canner, there's a good chance you're going to have them break. So I don't use those. My ma always had, uh, well, blue ones and she had the regular ones too, but she always used the zinc lids when I was growing up, you know, with the rubber gasket. I, I don't use them for that. They'll, they, like I say, I use them for dry storage, but I don't use them for canning anymore. But she always did, because I know we used to get in trouble all the time. She'd make pickles and put them in the basement on the shelf, and we'd think, ah, you know, we're going to steal a pickle. Well, you open them up and steal a pickle, then the whole jar is going to go bad. But we wouldn't take a whole jar, we'd take like one pickle out of each jar. And she couldn't figure out why her pickles were going bad. Well, it was because we kept opening them, you know, and pulling one out. Well, <laughs> I have to admit that now, but like I say, don't be afraid to buy new jars. Uh, it just bothers me when I see people. I, I think a lot of times it's that people that work in thrift stores or like or have a rummage sale, it's, they're not really familiar with the cost of, of stuff like that, so they kind of tend to. They think, you know, they look at something like that and they think, well, that's got to be worth a couple bucks. But it isn't, you know, used it's worth about 50 cents. So that's a fair price.